Up until this point, we've only been running our application locally using simple Angular server. This means that we have to be on the same computer that our server is running on in order to access our application in our browser. It's time to change that and to deploy our application to a live, publicly hosted server so that anyone with an internet connection can access our application on the web. We're going to accomplish this using something called Firebase. Firebase is Google's backend as a service, which is a complete server-side solution that includes hosting, database, and storage for our application. This means we don't have to write any server-side code ourselves. And Firebase is extremely easy to use. In fact, a free Gmail account is all you need in order to start using Firebase. And to get to Firebase, we simply go to firebase.google.com. I'm going to go ahead and click on Go to Console, which will take us to our console of projects. Since this is our first time using Firebase, we don't have any projects created. So let's go ahead and add a project. I'm going to name my project Example. I'll click Create Project. And then it'll take us to our Projects Overview. We'll explore this overview more in the next sections of this lesson. But for now, we need to connect our local development environment with this Firebase project so that we can deploy our application to this Firebase project and have it available live on the web. To begin, I've created a new empty project folder that will contain the application that we would like to connect to our Firebase project. And we make this connection using a command line library called Firebase-Tools. Now this library doesn't work all that great with the Git Bash shell that Windows users have been using thus far. So they're going to have to switch to the native command prompt in the Windows environment. Mac users, however, can continue to use their terminal as they have been up until this point in the course. Now for Windows users to access the command prompt, go to the Cortana search feature and type the letters CMD and the best match will be the command prompt. So we'll click on that and it'll pop up the command prompt in our window. From here, all users will want to navigate to that directory that we created for our project. In my case, it's in the Documents, Resume Builder, Lessons, Angular directory. And notice that for Windows users, we've now switched to where the directories are separated by backslashes as opposed to forward slashes. Mac users will still have forward slashes as their directory separators. Click Enter, and now we're in that directory we created for this project. From here, we're going to need to download that library called Firebase Tools, and we do this using npm install-g Firebase Tools. I've already installed my Firebase Tools, so I'm not going to run this prompt again, but when you first start, you'll need to go ahead and install these tools. Once the tools are installed, we can go ahead and run a command prompt from this suite of tools. And the command prompt that I'm going to run is Firebase space init. And Windows users should be aware that they may need to close and reopen their command prompt before running that command. So if you get an error that says Firebase is an unknown command, then you're going to just want to restart your command prompt. If you see this cool welcoming sign called Firebase though, then you know that you're ready to proceed. We'll do this by typing the letter Y or simply pressing Enter. Notice that the capital letter is the default, so we don't actually have to type it if we don't want to. But we press Enter, and it asks us what Firebase CLI features we want to set up for this folder. We want both database and hosting for this project, so I'm going to leave the default settings. I'll press enter, and then it says, let's associate this project directory with a Firebase project. And we want to associate this directory with the project that we set up in the Firebase console, which is that example project. So I'm going to click the down arrow, and that will select the example project. Then I click enter, and we want our database rules to be in that default database.rules.json file, so we'll select it by simply pressing enter. And similarly, we want our application that will be made public through our hosting service to be in that default public directory. So we'll simply press enter. Then it says, do we want to configure this as a single page app? Of course, we're using Angular, so yes, we do. 
and it tells us that our Firebase initialization is complete. Now, one caveat to this is that the first time around, you may need to sign in to your Firebase account before being able to use these command line commands. You'll simply be prompted with a browser window in your default browser to sign into your Firebase account, and then you'll be able to continue on with these commands. And when we finish the initialization process and go back to our text editor in our Sublime Text, we'll see that Firebase created several files, including a .firebase src, a database.rules.json, and a firebase.json, as well as that public directory containing our index.html file. 